Today we're going to talk about our daily apparatus check, particularly the pump operations part of it. And we're going to talk about multiple things. We're going to start up in the cab and work our way back to the pump panel. And then we're going to go through our daily operations as it pertains to running the pump, including uh, the electronic governors, pressure relief valves, gauges, and primers. All right, the one thing we want to check is make sure our water gauge is reading full. Then we also want to climb up top and physically check to make sure the gauge matches what physically is present in the tank. We also want to check any auxiliary uh, levels such as the foam levels, whether we have class A or class B foams. And each foam system is going to be different based on your manufacturer. The next responsibility is to make sure you're familiar with your pre-connects. Uh, most of the time we're going to be working off of these pre-connect hose lines. They're pre-connected for a reason is that they're set up for our district, our jurisdiction. And what we want to do is make sure we know what those pressures are ahead of time. Whether you keep a chart in the pump panel itself, another thing people will do is on pre-connects, go ahead and take a dry erase marker and mark the proper pressures. We also want to check any pre-connected hose lines and make sure the proper nozzles are on and the settings are correct. Whether we have an adjustable nozzle or a stack tip, we want to make sure everything is set the way we want it to be set for the shift. As we do a walk around of the truck, we want to ensure that things coming off the back that are supposed to be connected to the truck are connected. A lot of times they're real easy to uh, be out of sight, out of mind. Uh, we, somebody may have cracked them to allow some air or water to, to drop out and then they haven't been reconnected. So we want to make sure everything coming off the back is, has its proper appliances, nozzles, and co connections as needed. Once we've pulled the apparatus out of the bay, we're going to take the transmission and put it into neutral and engage our parking brake. Next, we are slowly going to transfer from road to pump. If you have a middle point, go ahead and stop there as the air transfer occurs. When we get the green light indicating that we have properly uh, transferred, We'll then engage the transmission back into drive. At this point, we should get our second green light. And our speedometer should rise to around 20 miles per hour, indicating that we've properly transferred from road to pump. When we approach the pump panel, the tank to pump is the first thing we address. Whether you leave it open for the shift or keep it closed, that's up to you. However, do it the same way every day. First thing we do is check our primer. This allows us to know that one, the primer is working. The second thing is that for some reason the pump didn't drain uh, over the course of the previous shift. Next we go to our governor and or throttle. If you have a manual throttle, your check procedure is going to be a little bit different. With the electronic governors, we go into the proper PSI or RPM mode and then throttle it up. When we throttle up our pump with our electronic governor, we want to check our pump discharge gauge and run it up to about where the hand lines are run at. Somewhere in the area between 150 and 170 would be adequate. As we do this, we want to open our recirculation line or tank fill so that we don't overheat our pump. It doesn't take long with water not flowing to overheat these pumps, so we want to make sure we recirculate it. We also want to check and make sure we're not showing pressure on any gauges that are closed. If we see pressure, it's going to indicate that there's either a problem with the valve or the gauge itself. Couple of points with the transfer from road to pump. If you get grinding when you re-engage your transmission, chances are you've gone too fast after shifting um, from road to pump gear. So something to keep in mind, make sure everything's slow and deliberate so that you don't get those gears grinded. The second thing is that if the transfer does not occur, 
check your air gauges and make sure the truck has air in its reserves. If during your morning inspection you've got water flowing coming out of the bottom of the truck, the things we need to check first and foremost are the drains. Uh, if, if any hand line was pulled during the previous shift, it's real easy to leave a drain open and that's going to be your most common cause for having water coming out when it shouldn't be. This has been our morning pump check, uh, just on the operations of our pump, uh, getting ready for the shift. Remember that department policies and man manufacturer recommendations should be followed.